Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Tuesday the 24th of November 2020 and we're reporting on another surge in stocks to all-time highs and a small but determined hammering of precious metals. So let's take a look. Now, first of all, a shout out to our video produced yesterday entitled Why Gold and Silver Fell Below Support Levels, where we reported that gold had fallen by some $35 to $1,836 and silver by some $0.60 cents to $23.60. Well, both of them were hit again today. Now, we are reporting this quite late at 2200 hours GMT. And gold has fallen to $1,808, having almost reached the bottom of our major support level of 1850, having actually touched 1801 and 52 cents. Silver, too, has fallen to $23.28, having been as low as $22.96 today. We did say yesterday that we expected it to dip below $23 within the next day or so, or at least it was a very, very strong possibility. Now, what is perhaps surprising yet again for many is that gold and silver have fallen, but so too has the US dollar index, and that's down 0.36 at 92.14, struggling to stay in the 92 territory. We reported yesterday that the market manufacturing and services preliminary PMIs were up more than expected. But today, the Consumer Confidence Index for November was down a fair amount compared with October. In fact, a fall from 101.9 to 96.1. Now, tomorrow is when we shall see most of this week's data being announced, most of the US economic data, that is, and we shall produce quite a comprehensive midweek report on that. The interesting aspect today is that a larger than expected rise in US home prices boosted yields, thereby creating a degree of downward pressure on gold and silver. Now, the S&P CoreLogic Case Schiller National Home Price Index, which measures average home prices in major metropolitan areas across the nation, rose 7% in the year that ended in September, up from a 5.8% annual rate the prior month, a much ra larger rise than expected. In fact, September marked the highest annual growth rate since May 2014. Now, analysts are creating currently new support levels for gold, or at least referring to new support levels. Of course, arguably some of them existed before, and are forecasting <laughs> A price now in the 1750 to 55 territory, closer to 1755, which is where the July lows were experienced. And resistance is now seen quite strongly at 1860, whereas previously that was support. Short term and medium term momentum are negative, and the MACD suggests lower prices. You see, the $1,800 level for gold is an important support level as it is where the 200-day EMA rests. But if this level is actually breached and holds for a day, we could see a quick descent to the 1755 level. Now, silver's decline towards the 2275 level is important also. And although it has recovered from there, if it were to breach it again, then a decline into the $21 territory is indeed very possible. But fortunately, so far, buyers were found close to the 2275 level. Now, the 200 day EMA for silver rests at 2181, which should then offer quite strong support. But to be frank, if it breached that, then our $20 ultimate outlier could be called into account, though we're not expecting it to fall that low this week. We also see no reason why really silver 
would rise to $25 this week and may very well struggle to get back to the $24 level. But as we all know, a lot can happen in a week. Or even in a day where silver is concerned. Now let's have a quick look at the equity markets. So equity markets have risen again today. And in fact, we're on somewhat of a tear. The Dow was up 454 points at 30,000. Yes, 30,046 or one and a half percent. The first time the 30,000 level has been breached. The S&P 500 is up 57 points at 3,635, up 1.6 percent. And the Nasdaq is up 156 points at 12,036 or 1.3 percent. UK and European markets are up an average of 1.2 to 1.5%, with the FTSE 100 index being up 98 points at 6,432. The DAX index up 165 at 13,292. And the Euro stocks 50 up 44 at 3,507. Now overnight, that's last night, the Asia-Pacific markets were up in varying degrees, but most of the major ones around 2%. And we shall see if further rises occur this evening. We expect them to. But they've already risen quite reasonably in the last 24 hours. But we are expecting a continuation. A few hours ago, Reuters put up a very good descriptive article of what happened today in the equity markets, but also cautioned investors not to get too carried away. We shall therefore end on reading this article and would ask that if you have any comments, do share them and please do not forget to subscribe to our video. We also produced a video on the Richard and Greg channel earlier today and would recommend that you listen to that one as we ask the question, will the Biden presidency, should it occur, go on to lead the country to greater wokeism or wokeness with a touch of socialist communism? And we've placed a link to that channel in the description box below. So let's move over to the Reuters article. Reuters article dated 24th of November 2020 and updated at 1900 hours GMT. Headline. Dow cracks 30,000, a psychological boost during a pandemic. The Dow Jones Industrial Average clocked its fastest 10,000-point run up to 30,000 for the first time on Tuesday, giving the stock market a psychological boost at a time when the coronavirus pandemic has damaged the economy and left millions unemployed. Investor sentiment has been lifted by encouraging news about a coming coronavirus vaccines and improving prospects for a smooth White House transition, but the milestone is less significant to professional investors. At 30,000 points, the Dow could lure in small investors still on the sidelines who are now eager to share in the market exuberance. But market watchers say they are less impressed than they were with the 20,000 mark reached in January 2017. And technically speaking, it means little beyond making a headline that can turn heads. Brian Levitt, global market strategist at Invesco, advised clients in a blog not to be overly impressed or concerned by new records, that offer very little information by themselves. Dow 20,000 was met with less fanfare than Dow 10,000 almost 18 years earlier, he noted. Many pundits coined it the least loved bull market in history. Perhaps after the tech wreck and the financial crisis, we were too world weary to celebrate. And yet maybe the missing jubilation was as good a sign as any that the advance would continue. The Dow Jones Industrial Average on Tuesday rose 1.46% of 432 points and traded at a record high of 30,116 points, not quite four years after reaching the 20,000 mark on the 25th of January 2017. Catalysts included recent signs that a working COVID-19 vaccine could be available before the end of the year based on promising trial results released by Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca. The index eclipsed last Monday's high just under the threshold reached after Moderna said its COVID-19 vaccine 
had a 94.5% effective rate. Lubricating Tuesday's rally, President Donald Trump gave the go-ahead to start helping the transition of President-elect Joe Biden, easing political uncertainty that has hung over markets since the November 3rd election. A day earlier, the US federal agency that must sign off on the transition gave Biden approval to begin the process. As the 124-year-old DJIE, Dow Jones Industrial Average, advances, each 10,000 milestone represents a smaller proportional gain. The index, which dates back to 1896, first touched 10,000 in March 1999. Percentage-wise, 20 to 30 is only 50%. It's a nice number to look at and certainly will attract some retail folks to say, hey, the market's moving said Joe Saluzzi, co-manager of trading at Themis Trading in Chatham, New Jersey. With that said, I think this rally should be exhausting itself. US economic activity is reeling from the damage inflicted by lockdowns, although it has recovered some in recent months, and employment is at levels last seen in 2015. Trillions of dollars of US central bank and government stimulus has helped power Wall Street's main indices back to record highs. Two weeks ago, the Dow spiked 1,600 points, ending up more than 800 points, when Pfizer first revealed the high effectiveness and near readiness of its vaccine, which launched the benchmark S&P 500 and Russell 2000 small cap index to their own records. The Russell hit another record on Tuesday, and the S&P is just short of its November the 9th peak. For the average person, the Dow is a well-recognized proxy for the overall US stock market. But to most investors, its relevance, with only 30 large-cap stocks, is not what it was. The total Dow market capitalization is $9.2 trillion, and a piffling $28.2 billion is indexed to it, according to S&P Dow Jones indices. The S&P, with 505 constituents, has a marked cap of almost $32 trillion. It is far more important as a barometer of the overall market, with $4.6 trillion indexed to it. J.J. Kinahan, Chief Market Strategist at TD Ameritrade in Chicago, said the 30,000 level has psychological importance but should be seen in the context of Wall Street's overall rally, led by mega-cap tech stocks and companies that benefited from people shopping, ordering in, video chatting, and exercising at home since the pandemic started. The big deal that's happening now is the fact that the stocks that have been so loved since March, the Zooms and the Pelotons of World, and so on, that they're looking for new areas to put their money, and they're putting it in some of the stocks that have been unloved over the past few months, he said, pointing to the recent rally in beaten down energy stocks and financials. End of article. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also, kindly visit our website at illuminatisilver.com, and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.